Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Ben Olson, that's Nathan Fox. We're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT, we have another email from Anonymous. Military Anonymous this time. I can tell because of the VR at the end of the email. <laughs> <laughs> this is like Captain Anonymous. Yep. Anonymous followed our advice and withdrew their applications for this cycle. Now they plan to retake the LSAT and reapply in the fall. Anonymous says that they feel, quote, a great load of unnecessary pressure relieved. And they have some follow up questions about what to do next. So this is somebody we've talked to in the past. Nathan, I feel like we need um, Eric to play a sound of like congratulations, like applause, or <laughs> something. The people do sounds. this. Yeah, like, dun, 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 dun. yeah, like, yeah. congrats. Like, we, we give the signal, and then when people do this kind of shit, we go, yeah, like, okay, they get, they deserve the whatever the fuck it is, the demon, the demon trumpet. I don't know what it is. Uh, it needs to be like a hellish trumpet. Yeah, yeah that would be great. <laughs> Fire Somebody crackling in the background. Yeah, okay. Actually followed our advice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, love it. Yeah. Um, cool. I think that that's going to serve you well. I think that your LSAT process is going to be a lot easier now that you're not trying to force yourself into a cycle that you're just clearly not prepared for. So good job. All right. So here's anonymous's actual email. Uh, before this, I was living and breathing pure LSAT. I even turned down a valuable law firm job to devote all my time to the LSAT. So I was unemployed and just treated LSAT as if it were a full-time job. Do you recommend I change this approach? Should I get a part-time job and put in an effective one to two hours a day for the LSAT? Yes. Yeah, I agree. I think you should definitely be working. I think that having a bit of distraction, something else to work on, a little bit of income, And put the LSAT in its place where it's like, no, I'm going to steadily chip away at this one to two hours a day for however long it takes while also having a life. Uh, I think that is your best plan. This is so easy to say yes to because Anonymous here, Captain Anonymous is asking, should I get a part-time job? Yeah, 100%. I mean, that's so easy to do and then do the LSAT. I was tempted to say, you know, if you went back to that law firm, they'd probably hire you anyway. Yeah. They wanted to hire you the first time. I don't see why they don't hire you the second time. If you're like, hey, I decided to wait another year for law school. I'm going to be studying my LSAT one to two hours. That's the thing that they might not then want to hire you, (laughs) which would be like a tell that you shouldn't take that job. Right. Because I I was going to say, go back to them. Maybe you could get that job, which would be great. But Not if they're going to work your ass off. Like if they're going to demand, even if they're going to demand like strictly nine to five. Yeah. That's still like an inhumane amount of time to be spending in an office. And and it's not conducive to, you know, your best performance on the LSAT or anything else, really. Not to say that you can't study full time, like study while also working full time, because plenty of people do. Plenty of people do. And it really depends on what else is going on in your life. That said, yeah. The one, like, I think strongest counter argument to all of this is if you've never worked in a law firm before and you Mm. go there and you get that experience and you realize, I don't want to have anything to do with this, Mm -hmm. that will be a bigger win than crushing the LSAT. In fact, the crushing of the LSAT will just bring you closer to something that you're ultimately going to hate. Maybe you could get a part-time job in a law firm. Then you could kind of have the best of all worlds. You could have a part-time distraction to put the LSAT in its place. You could have a little bit of income from the job and you could get a sense of what it's really like to uh, be in these industrial meat grinders that uh, we call law firms. By the way, I was just playing racquetball with my friends the other night and one of my friends is an attorney in DC and he mentioned, oh, I can't come Tuesday night because I'm working late, not surprisingly till like 8.30 on some big case. And then he mentioned, though, that he works part-time. And I said, the firm lets you work part-time? I've never heard of this. Have you heard of this? Hmm. He said, yeah, they just have this thing. I think his firm is Covington. And they just said, hey, you want to work 80% of the time? Fine, we'll pay you 80% of your pay. You have 80% of the billable hours requirement. And... If you get a bonus, it's 80% of what you normally would get. And I was like, wow, 
Hmm. Honestly, 80% of what most attorneys work is a, probably about it's a reasonable amount of work, possibly. I mean, it still might be too much, but 80% of what most attorneys do sounds about right. The money's still good. Yeah. Um, I, I would be worried that they would be using this as an excuse to just pay you less, give you less bonus. But then the responsibility level is just 100% the same. Yeah. I mean, the fact that the billable hours are reduced, that, makes that it helps. Seem that helps for legit. sure. But yeah. the, them owning your time, <laughs> I don't think that changes. Like, he's still not going to be able to play racquetball on any time that they don't want him to play racquetball. That's true. But he does have a day off. Wow. So it's how a often do they have him come in on his day off? I don't know. It's a good question. <laughs> Ask him. I, I yeah. want to hear. We can yeah. follow up on a, on a future episode. If you uh, find out how, how many of those days off are really days off. And but the no. days that he's on, he's, he's there long, right? I mean, getting home oh, at yeah. 30 with kids. Yeah. I was going to say like for me working 80% of what a lawyer works, no fucking way. I'm out. Still too I'm much. Out. But the fact that way it's too an much. option is like, it seems like something that a lot of attorneys should take advantage. If you're oh, already absolutely. in that shit show and you make 80%, too much money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's nobody needs, you don't need to make $180,000 salary right out of law school. Mm -hmm. Right. If you're, if you're only getting 80% of that, you're leaving 36,000 on the table. You're still making $144,000 a year. Pretty damn good. I mean, that's, that's a lot of money, yeah. but then, yeah, they are still going to be requiring a lot of your time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Working for 10 hour days or whatever it is or more. Right. And them having demand, like the, the ability for them to just say, oh no, we have a trial coming up. What? You had a vacation planned? No, we have a trial coming up. Yeah. Which they're always still going to do, even if you're at that 80% level. So I, w I would be worried about that. But yeah, man, I, I, that isn't an interesting idea. I, I think that they generally, they, they pay so much and they try to get so much out of people and it's inhumane. And instead they could just cut that all down a bit. Yeah, well, he's been there for a while too. And I wonder how mm. unique this is to him. I mean, it doesn't sound like it's unique to him. He's the only one doing this. It sounds like a thing that they have but yeah. he was inclined to leave. And I think this was their olive branch. Like, Hey, what about 80%? Oh, I see. Yeah. So he already proved his worth. Yes. He already went through the gauntlet of being a first year, second year associate. And he proved that he could work the 60 hours a yeah. week and 15 hour days and nights and <laughs> weekends and all that shit. And then when he was like, proved his value and he was ready to walk, then they made him a more civilized offer. Yeah. Makes sense. Hmm. I mean, that's what I would do if I was evil and powerful. <laughs> <laughs> You're just evil. So what? <laughs> uh, number two, what would be the best way to let my letter of recommendation writers know about my situation? Should I notify them right away of my postponement? They did tell me to keep them updated. Or should I simply keep at it and reach out to them once I have got my LSAT in place? Thanks for your time and support. Your platform and advice is second to none. VR Anonymous. I don't see a problem with, if someone literally asked you to keep them updated, I would just send them a quick email, just say, hey, I've decided to postpone. But if they didn't ask, then I would just keep going. Yeah, Actually, I mean, there's, there's no problem with getting letters on record early. Yeah. So yeah. if they're already working on it or whatever, it might be easier for them to just finish it. Finish it. Yeah, that's true. I, would, I don't want to like annoy them by. Oh, actually, no. Yeah, I know you're almost done with it, but I, I'm actually going to wait. I'm going to I'm going to ask you again in 10 months. I mean, that doesn't sound very good either. I don't really understand. So, they did tell me to keep them updated. Updated about what? I mean, I would just. Reach out maybe and. See how it's yeah. going. Yeah. And just remember that letters of recommendation are really just not that important. I mean, they are necessary, but they're not really like a huge 
there's not a huge important thing. It's just one of many, many, many hoops that you're going to be jumping through um, as part of your law school applications and law school life. So, uh, you know, send them a note, tell them that you're waiting a bit. That's fine. Let them just go ahead and finish the letter. If you've already requested it and they're already working on it, then just let, let them finish it. And it'll have an older date on it when you apply, but who cares that it just doesn't matter. A letter that's a year or two or three old, it just doesn't, it doesn't matter. That's fine. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening.